Hello everyone, this is Mr. 13 Things and I'm starting off on a set of videos which is going to try to investigate exactly how the shift can happen in fifth grade with the support of things like Khan Academy involve teachers and parents who maybe don't know the high order math but start to respect that the high order math is in their cell phones and in their GPS and start to respect the fact that we cannot survive well if we don't get kids pushed into the fun exciting parts of math as the Greeks knew oh so many years ago so in that vein there's a set of numbers and ratios that exist on the planet that we're going to investigate how we can get it knowing before we even know the quote unquote computation. One has said, I have read, actually it came from a teacher, that all math begins as geometry. Okay, so math, let's see if we can do this. Math basically at some point has to equal geometry. They are not separate subjects. Mathematics, geometry, this is they're all kind of sub pieces of the big wide world. And the Greeks started with geometry, and so we're going to start with geometry as well to look at some of these key basic numbers. We'll just look at a couple right here, but let's think about what they are. Well, many of them are right there inside that e to the i pi equals minus 1, right inside of Euler's formula. You, know, you realize that there's a number e there, there's a number i there, there's a number pi. And later on, you're going to see that some of these irrational numbers of the square root of 2, the square root of 3, and the square root of 5 are incredibly important and great numbers. And the other number or ratio that's as important as any of all these and gets awfully short shrift in our schools and in our lives, except for when we perceive beauty, is that concept of the golden ratio also known as phi, golden ratio. So all these numbers I'm going to kind of show and derive, at least here we're going to derive and see what are these four numbers by looking at a construction of a basic unit circle. That will also get us, I guess, the opposite of i, and it will also kind of get you the concept of pi. So out of our fundamental values here, we can get them all from a very basic construction. So we're going to do that by making a circle here, right? And I'll do my best now to kind of draft what we're going to call, you see I had a little cheater, cheater dots. So I'm just kind of faking it here and we're trying to avoid, we're trying to pretend like we can draw a circle. And we're calling this a circle here and we'll start with that circle having knowledge that this is a radius of one. So the value here if we see that, we'll call that one unit. From there, kind of cross, and it's one unit up. Now let's look at how we can get the value of one. Well, obviously the value of one is this length here, either one of these lengths. Well, there's the value of one. We know that the Basically, pi is going to be the circumference divided by the diameter, so we can kind of get pi there. How do you get the square root of 2? Well, the square root of 2 is just that length there. That length by itself is the square root of 2. So we have there, we have the square root of 2. So from this construction, we can get the square root of 2 as well. So we have that one easily done. How can we now get the square root of 3? Well, what we can do here, and you'll look at this in other videos, we can divide this and this into their halfway points and draw a line across here and a line across there and get a line that goes from here to that intersection point right there. Right? Now, if you think about that, this is now a half, and there's you know some values there that you will eventually learn. But what you can do now instead is we can now take a line up here, kind of goes up from there, the secant that's called, and extend this out. 
And if we extend that out, this value here is the square root of 3. This is the square root of 3, this is 1, and this is 2 out here. So all of a sudden, by a basic two simple constructions, we have gotten the square root of 2 and the square root of 3. We're not done yet because we're going to get to the square root of 5 by first getting the golden ratio by another construction. So what I'm going to do is I'll try to switch colors here if I can. I'll go to blue and show you how you go about doing the calculating the golden ratio and then eventually the square root of 5. So you start with a circle and you draw essentially you complete the square if you would where this is a square of sides 1 and 1. You then take this same thing that you had done before that 1 half there and you draw an arc. So you're going to kind of draw this arc right and you're going to draw it out here Right, so you've kind of drawn another circle that's a little bit larger than the other circle. So you're drawing an arc and get this distance here. It turns out this distance here is actually the golden ratio. But you're not done yet. Because it turns out, by definition, the golden ratio, what you've got in the golden ratio here, right? the golden ratio, it turns out, is the average of 1 and the square root of 5. So if you go out to Donald Duck and Math Magical Land, right, you can see that Donald does this along with Walt Disney before he froze his body. You now take 1, which is that length, and phi, and you kind of extend that line through here until it hits the secant line here, the tangent line there, I'm sorry. And this, it turns out, is the square root of 5. So what you did is you came up with the golden ratio. We'll look at that by itself, by a classic construction of drawing a midpoint line, swinging an arc, that gets you the golden ratio. Connecting the line of length 1 with this line of the golden ratio phi. Extending it out here, and then you realize, of course, by definition, when you look at this later again, phi is the average of 1 and the square root of 5 over 2. And that's what you'll see in the Donald Duck in Math Magical Land video. So, by this basic construction, with before you've learned any value for what they are, you have determined, at least looked at what pi is, and that's equal to the definition, by definition, circumference divided by diameter. Best done with strings and tapes and all kinds of different ways with young students. 2, square root of 2 is just the diagonal across two points here in the unit circle. Square root of 3, you do that by figuring out essentially what is a 60 degree line extending it up and that's done again by construction of a half and a half. One is steeper, this one that is to the other uh, connection point is 30 degrees. You extend it up to the tangent line. That becomes the square root of 3. Finally, what you do is you fill in the square box. You do a construction for the um, golden ratio. Extend the lines through, and you get the square root of 5. And this number here is not as important as the others. You generally want to know this number so you can come back and construct and have knowledge of exactly what is the golden ratio. Though later on you'll see the golden ratio here is best determined by the Fibonacci series. Right. And if you want to see a great discussion of the Fibonacci series, go to Mr. Magorium's Magic Emporium with the great Dustin Hoffman. So, by this simple scribble and construction, I don't know, maybe two weeks, maybe one week, maybe one day, you have informed students into a set of values that they can then use to truly understand what numbers come out of understanding the full trigonometric values around its unit circle, which will be comprised of square root of twos, square root of threes, and square root of sixes, which is not so bad because it's just the square root of two times the square root of three. E to the i pi equals minus 1 is then also easily defined. Though I'm running out of 10 minutes, let's now at least finally look at what is i. 
i is the square root of minus one. And what is e? e is one plus a very small number, one over infinity if you would, multiply by itself an infinite number of times, and that is, is, is not a geometric construction, but it gives us a value of around 2.713, I think, or something like that. But one plus a very small number to an infinite power, or for students, one plus a little bit more multiplied by itself many, many, many times. Thanks for listening. Let's check these off. We got pi, we got e, we got i, and minus one is, you'll see later, is just the opposite of your original direction. Thanks for listening.